Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you guys 10 glitch art photo effects and techniques to add to your glitch art toolbox. So let's begin, and before we start, for all of these effects, remember I like to keep a clean copy of the background layer when possible, so always right click and duplicate things and have that ready. And whenever you're working, try to work with right clicking and converting things to smart objects and smart filters and use adjustment layers rather than image adjustments when possible. By working non-destructively, you'll always be able to go back and fix things if you mess up or go too far. All right, so for our first effect, I'm gonna show you guys how to use the single row marquee tools to create pixel stretch effects. Now, if you don't see them under the rectangular marquee tools, then you might have to go to the little three dots and find them here. So you have vertical column marquee tool or row marquee tool. So in this case, I'll grab my row marquee tool and I'll click on an area that I want to pixel stretch out. So let's click on this area under the lip. Then you can just press Command T and then hold Shift and you can stretch that area down or up. So in this case, I want to stretch it down. See that creates a cool pixel stretched effect which creates a glitch in the photo. Another cool thing you can do with the selection tools is let's say you had your marquee tool you can actually then grab your rectangular marquee tool and then working on different modes like subtract from selection I could subtract out parts of that so that when I go to do the this glitch effect and press command T I can only stretch out this little weird chunk in the middle. So remember, you can combine the rectangular marquee tool with other ones to create unique selections like so. So consider that the second tip is, remember, whatever distortion effects we're going to apply later on, you can always just use your marquee tools to only apply them to certain chunks of the photo. All right, so the next thing you should keep in your toolkit is this particular VHS slash VCR font. So if you go to your text tool, this font is called VCR OSD Mono. I'm sure there's other VCR style fonts online, but essentially just Google this. You should find it for free to download on a site called defont.com. And this is how to get these timestamps that you often see. So it's not really a photo effect, but more of a tip to keep in your toolbox is that font. Next, I'm going to show you guys how to mess up and muddy up the colors a bit to make them look more like it was a VHS or low quality television recording. So if you go to layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation, you can actually just take the hue slider and mess it up a little bit. So just drag it to the left a little bit. You'll start to see some yellows turn into more orangey colors. You can mess with the saturation to mess things up a little bit and the lightness and darkness just to kind of muddy up the effect and get a more distorted look. Another color effect you can do is just to totally invert the colors by going to layer, new adjustment layer, invert. And this will give you that completely inverted color effect which you can use as a backdrop to lay other things on or do different things with. And additionally, remember, you can set all of these adjustment layers to different blending modes as well. So I can set this to lighten or I can set this to difference and get different unique effects this way as well. One cool trick you can do with blending modes is if you go to the hard mix blending mode, it obviously it usually gives you something that's really unusable like this. I guess in most cases it's unusable. However, if you turn down the fill rather than the opacity, you can get cool effects with the hard mix filter because when you turn on the opacity, it just turns down the opacity as a whole which kind of looks cool too, but when you turn down the fill, it reacts in a different way that blends it together, and it's kind of hard to explain, but play around with it and you'll see that it reacts differently when you lower the fill rather than the opacity, which can give you some messed up and distorted colors as well. It's kind of the fun part about glitch art is you're actually trying to mess up the photo, so you kind of can't go wrong even if you're using these tools in the wrong way. So next I've been saving this effect for the middle because it's probably the most common one is the color channel splitting and color channel distortion effects. So whenever you have a photo open, you can always switch from the layer panel to the channels panel. And here you can select just one of the channels to work on. So let's say we're just going to edit the red color channel. 
From here, you can do things like go to Filter, Distort, Shear, and add a slight distortion. I like to use Repeat Edge Pixels to handle those areas, and press OK. Now when you turn the visibility of all the color channels back on, you'll see it creates that classic 3D glasses or split color effect. Now another way that you could distort the channel rather than just using the shear filter is to actually use blurring effects like either Gaussian blur or motion blur. So if I use motion blur, I'll show you what that ends up looking like. So I'll press OK. I'll turn everything back on. And now you can see you get more of a blurry 3D effect, which you might also find useful as well. So that's definitely one of the most popular and useful glitch art style effects is splitting the color channels and messing around with them. But another thing you can do is just use general distortions on your image. So if I go to filter, distort, wave is probably the best one when you're dealing with any kind of distortion. They've got all these different parameters like the number of wave generators, how large the wavelengths you want them to be, the amplitude of them, and the scale vertically or horizontally. And the type of wave is also important. A sine is like a regular wave. This is all mathematically, you know? And a square is more of square lines. So I'll just show you one example of what this could look like if you're talking about glitching things up. Press OK. You see I get this really glitched up effect just by using the wave filter. And remember from our earlier techniques, you can combine this with the marquee tool. So I can just highlight one portion of the area and then only apply the wave on that. And that can give you some really cool looks as well. Another cool one to keep in mind that's actually not in the filter distort menu is filter stylize wind. So wind just adds these kind of pixelated wind effects that stretch out the, the colors of a photo on the side. And you can do it on blast mode, stagger mode. They all do a little bit of a different thing. And you can do it from the right or left direction. Press OK, and you can see when I zoom in here, it gives it that pixelated wind effect, which can also be very useful. Now, if you want it to go up and down, since you know the wind filter only gives you option to go left and right, if you want it to go up and down, you can actually do a cool little trick by going to image, image rotation, and rotate the canvas 90 degrees clockwise. Now, when you go to filter, stylize wind, you can see right and left is still going right and left but since we flipped it it kind of technically is going up and down and then we can just flip our canvas back over by going to image image rotations and then go counterclockwise so you can see now we kind of added a really cool left and then up wind filter and that adds a cool pixelated look and you can actually just keep repeating that by going to filter and using the shortcut to just repeat that filter over and over for the last effect i'm going to show you one more way that you could degrade the quality of the image a little bit and roughen it up. So if you go to layer, new adjustment layer, posterize, this gives you the option to split the image into different amounts of levels. Now at its lowest setting, which is two, you don't really give Photoshop much to work with and it's splitting this in two and it looks really harsh. But the more and more levels you give it to work with, the more it looks like your original photo, except just a bit grainier and a bit more with a cutout effect. So you can see if I only give it 10 levels to work with, then this is what that ends up looking like. It just kind of adds a messed up look to it. Now you can combine this and all of these effects together in your projects to create the distorted glitch art masterpiece of your own. So if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely leave a like on it below. Check out the entire playlist on my channel where I have tutorials for each one of these specific effects and some more and break it down more in depth. Definitely subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all new future videos. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.